Today on the Chokeslam Wrestling Report, we're going to do a Forbidden Door preview. And we're going to talk about why CM Punk is not wrestling Kenta. Instead, he's wrestling Kojima at the Owen Hart Cup. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about the Okada versus Danielson. Plus, is Omega versus Osprey, are they going to steal the show like they did at Wrestle Kingdom? We're going to have that and much more on the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. Top guy in. We came out here to tell you to your face. You can't get ready for us. No, sir. Welcome to another episode of the Choke Slam Wrestling Report, and we are here to talk about the Forbidden Door, you know, uh, Forbidden Door pay per view coming up and whatnot. So this week, we're definitely uh, it's AEW week, especially in Canada. Um, as we saw this week, we saw uh, you know AEW Dynamite and whatnot. But there's a lot of things going on. When it comes to uh, Forbidden Door coming up. Now, one uh, particular match was announced last night in Rampage was Tom Lawler is going to wrestle Adam Cole and whatnot at um, Forbidden Door. And this is all because the uh, MJF decided to get even with Adam Cole after Adam Cole pretty much told him that, you know, he was scared to fight Tanahashi and for, you know, for his world title against Tanahashi at Forbidden Door. So pretty much MJF decided to do the favor back to him. And instead, he put him in the ring against Tom Lawler. Um, and Tom Lawler, you know, one guy that he has no slot. So before we do that, I'm going to tell you what is in store for the... Um, the match, uh, supposedly the 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 forbidden door card. Now, the zero hour women's Owen Hart Invitational Cup quarterfinal match uh, will have Athena versus Billy Stark. The Owen Hart Invitation will start at Forbidden Door. Also, I, I believe these two matches are going to be in the uh, card on the major card: Adam Cole versus Tom Lawler. Brian Danielson versus Kosciusko Okada, which we're going to be talking about and what I think it's going to happen in that match. Uh, of course, we're going to have the AEW World Champion, MJF, who put his title on the line against Hiroshi Tadahashi, which I mentioned in the beginning of this podcast. Also, the uh, BCC, Kanusuke Takesta, even though he is not, I don't know if he is a member or not, Shota Umino. And the Blackpool Combat Club, John Mockley, Willie Uden, and Claudio Castelloni with Don Callis against Eddie Kingston, Tomohiro Ishii, The Elite, Hangman Page, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. So this is going to be crazy, uh, Matt. Um, so we're going to see what happens in that. And, of course, this is not the first time uh, we're going to see Shota Umino and Moxley and Claudio Castelloni team up because they've teamed up at Dominion to go against Okada, Tanahashi, and Ishii for the six-man title at Dominion at the beginning of this month. So, also, Sonata will defend his IWGP title versus Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, which I am going to be talking about that later and what people think of that match. Chris Jericho, Minoru Gozuki, and Sammy Guevara versus Sting and Darby Allin and someone to be announced tonight at Collision. Uh, Sting will make an announcement who is going to team up with them against Chris Jericho, Suzuki, and Sammy Cavrao. This is the first time we're going to see Sting versus Chris Jericho in a ring. And it's amazing that even in the days of WCW, these two never, ever stepped in the ring and had a match. The AEW Women's World Champion, Tony Storm, will they put her belt on the line against New Japan Strong, 
uh, women's openweight champion Willow Nightingale. So it's going to be Wolf champion versus champion. The men's Owen Hart Invitational Cup. CM Punk versus Satoshi Kojima. I want to be talking about that after I finished with the card. Don't know why CM Punk is in the Owen Hart tournament. Don't know why. But anyway, then we're going to have an AEW International Championship four-way match with Orange Cassidy, the champion, against Daniel Garcia versus Zack Sabre Jr., the New Japan Pro Wrestling TV champion, and the Ring of Honor Pure champion, Katsujuri Shibata, which it will be incredible, which after me, it looks like maybe Daniel Garcia will be able to beat Orange Cassidy for that belt. Hopefully that happens because Orange Cassidy has had this belt for so long and he's been through punishment or whatever. And the main event of the night, Kenny Omega versus Will Osprey Part 2 is happening and we're going to see what's going to happen in that match. So let's start off real quick. CM Punk and Kenta will not, and I repeat, will not be happening at Forbidden Door. Now, my thing is, why this never got to happen? Why it never went to fruition? And why Why can it not be made? I think if this would have been made, this probably would have been the greatest pay-per-view AEW and New Japan could have done. Because you think about it, you got Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay. You got Okada versus Danielson. Two main t- guys in that one. And then you had Kenta versus CM Punk. And this would have been perfect. CM Punk would have been, you know, instead of him, you know, being labeled as a complainer and acting like a little girl, and I'm going to say that, acting like a little girl, acting like a little baby the way he did AEW Collision, that all would have been put to the side. And then him and Kenta would have just settled their situation where Kenta who has been accusing, and which is true, not accusing, it's the truth, that CM Punk stole his move, his GTS move, go to sleep. And they would have went, did this match, and would have gotten over it. But as you know, a couple of weeks ago, the reports were going around that Kenta kept um, uh, tweeting, I won the bag, which means he wanted money. He wanted a lot of money to be in this match against CM Punk. CM Punk was not thrilled about it. So basically, who is at fault for this not happening? Kenta didn't want to lose to CM Punk. And then basically, he wanted to get over CM Punk. But he wanted a lot of money, of course. And this this goes to show you that Tony Khan is catering to CM Punk already. Already, because if he was smart, he would have told CM Punk, "You're going into this wrestling match. This is happening." No, it didn't happen. He didn't want to pay Kenta. CM Punk didn't want to wrestle him. So basically, CM Punk is at the same spot that he is. So basically, he can't wrestle Kenta. What Tony Khan does, oh, let me put you in the Owen Hart tournament and you fight Kojima. Now, this is not the first rodeo between Kojima and CM Punk because I'm sure there were adversaries or rivals in MLW in 2004 when Kojima was down there along with CM Punk and the Horsemen that they were called back then. Uh, So basically what we're seeing here is, again, Tony Khan catering to CM Punk. This Kenta CM Punk should have had happened. I don't know why it can't, should have not happened. Why? You know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. So now you put Kenta. I mean, Kenta is not going to be at Forbidden Door unless he interferes in the match with Kojima. But then again, it won't make no sense because on that same bracket, with CM Punk is that you got some more Joe. So we may not get Kenta, but we may get some more Joe versus CM Punk. 2023, 19 years later, after these guys wrestled back in Ring of Honor almost two decades ago. So we still probably get something out of that. And we might have a few between him and Sabu and Joe because basically this is what's the plan before, before CM Punk came in that they was gonna he was gonna be feuding against Samoa and Joe. And Joe got just got a brand new Ring of Honor TV championship. All those Ring of Honor titles look alike. I don't know why, but they all look alike. It doesn't look doesn't look the same. So it just uh that's just me. But we'll see. I mean, basically, uh the way I look at it is just um babying. You babying CM Punk. Kenta's asking for money, you know what I'm saying? A lot of money, and I don't blame him. He is the New Japan strong openweight champion, and he shouldn't be losing to 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 CM Punk, especially he's been wrestling out there. Well, I mean CM Punk's been home for the last nine months. 
So I basically feel that uh, Punk uh, pretty much being arrogant like he is, didn't give a rat's ass what the fans want because if you really care about what the fans want, you would give them that match. Whether what, what happens afterwards is over with. You could have just squashed it and get it over with, but it's not happening. The next topic I want to bring up is the, real quick, the Sonata versus Jungle Boy. Um, a lot of people were saying, why was Jungle Boy even challenging Sonata? Now, this week, my boy Michael Sorrentino posted something on Turbo Tabloid that it looked like it was a fan who wrote this, that pretty much uh, Sonata, well, it was Sonata, but I thought it was a fan who claimed that why is even Jungle Boy challenging Sonata for the belt. And then when I read it again, it was Sonata who actually said that, and the person just retweeted it and whatnot. And I had to read it a couple of times, but it looks like Sonata was disappointed that it was Jungle Boy instead of probably John Moxley, someone with more star power and whatnot to challenge him for the IWGP belt. And he even put is the IWG the IWGP belt is much prestige than the AEW belt. And I agree with that. I do agree with that. That belt has been around for ages. But I guess what Sonata was looking for was a match where he could cement his legacy and his history. Because last year, the champion of the IWGP world title was Jay White. And Jay White ended up putting that title in a four-way match with Hangman Page, uh, Kachusuko Okada, and uh, Adam Cole. And this is when Adam Cole got hurt. He got concussed. And when I at the uh, Urinagi by Jay White, that he landed wrong. So I guess Sonata was looking for something like that. And last night in Rampage, Sonata kind of confronted Jungle Boy to make to hype the match up, whatever. And you know you had to do that because nobody it looks like nobody cares that Sonata is defending his title against Jungle Boy. You know, and I had a, a friend of mine who goes to the House of Glory shows. They told me that she feels Sonata is boring. Not Sonata, um, Jungle Boy is boring. He's not, you know, he, he his his character is not all that. I mean, Jungle Boy could still wrestle. Maybe he lacks a little bit of charisma, but we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We'll see about that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's crazy. But a lot of people were not happy with Jungle Boy challenging Sonata for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. Okada versus Danielson. Again, the Katsusuko Okada versus Brian Danielson at Dream Match. But the reason I'm bringing this up because some wrestling fans, and I'm not saying all, some wrestling fans, sometimes I kind of question their mentality. Are you really a wrestling fan or are you just someone who just likes to talk crap online post stupid posts on Facebook, Twitter, and actually say, why is Okada versus o Danielson even happening? They have no storyline. And I say to that, read the damn pay-per-view name, Forbidden Door, which means anybody could go through the door and challenge anybody. It doesn't have to have a storyline. And some of these wrestling fans sometimes are... Uh, Condition to think WWE style of storylines. And I say that because everything in WWE is a storyline. It's supposed to be a storyline with story. Most of the storylines suck anyway, but with exception of the bloodline. Uh, and everything has to be, oh, I got to have a storyline. Not necessarily. A story could be told in a wrestling match without having a long term storyline or a storyline to begin with. And you can have a great match. Omega versus. Um, Jericho, I think it was, I believe, 2015 or 2016. It all was because, you know, Jericho attacked Omega. Oh, he challenged Omega. And the story, what was the story behind that? And why not? They had a they match, and the match was told in a match. Doesn't have to have a long-term storyline. And why not? Even though the guy got killed for even posting that on Facebook, he got killed. Like, they're telling him. It's called Forbidden Door for a reason, which I agree. And sometimes I just shake my head with some of these fans that don't understand, you know, that it's called Forbidden Door. Now, the question is, who's going to win the match between Okada and Danielson? I believe, honestly, that uh, I'm sure that Danielson is going to let Okada get over 
on him because first of all, Daniels is already at the peak of his career where he's about to retire very soon. I mean, he's still young, but he's been around for so many years. He has had a lot of injuries, whatever. But what a best, great way for him to actually get in the ring with the best professional wrestler right now in New Japan, that Kasusuko Okada. Now, you remember back a couple of years, uh, Daniel saying one of the wrestlers in New Japan and the WWE was trying to do this and people were like, oh my God, WWE is going to work with New Japan. And it was all bullshit. It was all lies. So now he has his opportunity, his opportunity to go and wrestle Okada. And he didn't even have to travel to New Japan. He, could, he had to wrestle right here in the United States. What a better way. And it's going to be a match that I, I believe it could be match of the year. I mean, Kenny Omega and Osprey to me, is still the match of the year. Along with MJF versus Danielson, Danielson and Okada could be match of the year. But then again, now you have Omega versus Osprey. Omega versus Osprey part two. And I think this match is going to steal the show. It could steal the show. It could be the Okada versus Danielson could steal the show. But you know what? Being you know, and this is the, the best part of AEW, you in a lot of the locker room, is you're going to see these guys, especially Omega, Danielson, Okada, Osprey. These guys are going to, these are wrestlers that one time or another were in Japan. They're going to step up. And they game, they're going to step up their game. It's going to be ridiculous. And if you cannot match that after this Forbidden Door pay-per-view, after all this, then I don't know what you'll be looking at. But let me tell you something. This is going to, I believe this pay-per-view is going to be one of the best pay-per-view of the year. I don't know if All Out or All In, whatever, All In, it's going to happen in London. It's going to blow anything out of the water. But I believe this pay-per-view is going to blow things out of the water. And so far, and maybe a lot of people may not agree and whatnot, the last two pay-per-views that AEW has had has been good. Except for a couple of matches, you know, like the Warlow versus, I believe, was Jungle Boy, I think, in Revolution. That, that was in all that. Uh, and I believe the there was another match on the Double or Nothing that I felt like was, was that even there. I think it was Jamie Hayter was hurt, and she should have never been in that wrestling match, whatever. But other than that, this car from top to bottom is pretty good. You can't ask for anything better. So tomorrow, Forbidden Door could blow the door out of this damn pay-per-view. No pun intended. But, you know, it's, this is stuff that it can happen. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, real quick, other news, WWE news. Uh, we saw Logan Paul appear on Raw this week. Again, WWE doing stupidity once again. As far as how you allow a guy like Logan Paul, who did not qualify in the Money in the Bank, didn't even have a match, for money in the bag just being put in. And yes, I know what people are going to say. Oh, you know, you need to have some star power. Logan Paul is not even a wrestler. Okay? Okay? And don't give me this, oh, he had a good match with the Miz. He had a good match with Roman Reigns. So what? So what? So you, you, you pretty much what you're doing is by bringing this outsider, this so-called boxer, whack-ass boxer, okay? And you bring him in, and you pretty much take all the hype and everything away from all the all your other guys who bust their ass to win and qualify these matches. You bust, they bust their ass. Now you're gonna go and throw a monkey in the wrench, or uh, uh, oh, I said that wrong, probably. You just threw a, a, a wrench in the program, fucked everything up. You know what I'm saying? How you think these wrestlers feel, knowing? They qualify for the match, and now you go and put Logan Paul. We all know what's going to happen. Logan Paul is going to end up winning the money in the bank and whatnot and go and challenge Seth Rollins for the world title. We're going to have a second match between these two already happened already in WrestleMania. So you pretty much uh, what you're doing is giving a, a WrestleMania rematch. This is a Vince McMahon thing. I don't want to hear that this is a Triple A shit. I don't want to hear this is a Triple A thought. This is a Vince McMahon move. Okay? And again, and the same people who complain about, oh, like what I, have, what I saw online this week, oh, Raquel Rodriguez didn't win the qualification for Money in the Bank, but you're the same guys that 
that complaining about it, you still support this freaking company. You still buying their merchandise. You still going to the to their shows like here in New York where I'm at. Go to Madison Square Garden, to Barclays Center, to the UBS Arena. And you waste money. You buy WWE titles and all this nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And and, and you know, it's, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, I don't understand how is it that you guys are complaining about it when you're still supporting it. So. If you don't like something, you don't support it. Let's say, example, MLW. MLW to me changed. And I stopped looking at it because I didn't like it. So I stopped supporting it. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with NWA. I never supported NWA. I think I bought like two pay-per-views out of them. And one on the best one of the pay-per-views was, I think, the 74th anniversary show. But they had the woman's show. It was pretty good. And one not. You know, other than that, I have never supported NWA. I'm, I'm not even hearing right now from NWA that... They want to put a match between Elon Musk and, and, and Mark Zuckerberg in, in, in a match. What? And then Triple A, I hear Triple A was like, oh, we, we got the match. Are you freaking serious? Are you following the steps of WWE and the stupidity? Because that's what you're doing. It, it, uh, I mean, Triple A, I don't know what they're thinking about, but NWA, Billy Corgan don't know shit about wrestling. Okay. His champion is weak. Tyrese is not world champion material, and this is why I don't support them. I don't support them at all. And I don't care who don't like what I'm, who's an NWA fan and don't want to support me. I don't care. Because facts are facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts are facts. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say whatever I want in my platform because that's it's my platform. And right now, NWA, by even mentioning that, ridiculous. Well, speaking back, go back to WWE. They go, Logan Paul did not wrestle for a qualification match for the I mean for the money in the bank and he's in it. Might explain that one to me. Then at SmackDown we saw Solo Solo Sikoa versus um Sheamus. Good match. This guy went at it, whatever. He tried to keep attacking uh Sheamus and the Usos came out and they super kicked his ass like three or four times. Uh, so the Bloodline Civil War is going to happen next Saturday at Money in the Bank, special time at 3 o'clock. They're coming from London. So, you know, I'll probably get get to see that. Um, but the only match I'm, I really, really want to see is the that the Civil War between these guys. And, you know, and that's it. Because the Seth Rollins versus, uh, how you call it, Finn Balor, we know... Seth Rollins is going to win that match. He's going to win that match. I mean, this Monday, Braun Breaker was supposed to be the one attacking Seth Rollins. Instead, Vince McMahon changed the whole damn thing and put Finn Balor attack Seth Rollins. And then Seth Rollins ended up beating Braun Breaker only to get attacked again by Seth Rollins. I mean, Finn Balor, I'm sorry. Seth Rollins defeated Braun Breaker, but then he got attacked again at NXT by Finn Balor. I mean... If you're really, really a wrestling fan, did you even bother want to see this? I mean, the only reason I watched, I think, a little bit of SmackDown last night to see the Usos and that whole Bloodline storyline, but that's going to come to an end. Because I thought maybe, you know, maybe Jacob Fatu will show up at WWE and whatnot and help Roman Reigns, but Jacob Fatu just won the MLW National Openweight Champion this week. So he ain't going nowhere. MLW is not letting go of Fatu. They're not. So it looks like he ain't coming anytime soon to WWE unless they buy out his contract. That's the only way I can think about it. But other than that, I mean, that's WWE for you. So I pretty much covered everything this week as far as wrestling is concerned. Um, can't wait to watch Forbidden Door. This card, uh, to me, honestly, is going to be real good. You can't. You cannot miss this at all. You cannot miss this at all. So we'll see what happens. Uh, again, guys, follow me on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel, the Chokesland Wrestling Report, the YouTube channel, and um, how you call it? Uh, see uh, what I got on the channel. I got tons, tons, and tons of content in the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell for a new upload. Also, you guys, you can check out this podcast on audio on uh pop being uh apple spotify iHeartRadio, pandora 
uh, any audio podcast platforms that you guys like to listen to your favorite show and whatnot. Uh, pretty much, you guys can follow me on my social media. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Usually, I'd be more on Twitter. You can also check out the podcast store. Yes, a podcast store. We got t-shirts, hats, hoodies. Go to tcwr.veryinkpressive.com. You know what I'm saying? And check out the store. And you can register to the to the website and you are uh be able to get access to the YouTube um channel and the audio podcast in case you guys uh don't want to go to the YouTube or don't have YouTube, you could check out the audio podcast again available on Spotify, Apple, uh Apple, uh what else? Pop being iHeartRadio and any uh you know favorite audio podcast platform you like to listen. I'm also on TikTok. So check it out. Uh check it out. So that is it for me today, guys. And again, check out the again my YouTube channel. I got tons of contents in there. So, you know, and we will check you guys out next week. Uh again, uh, I want to thank my boy Jay Santi and the Turnbuckle Tabloid for supporting the podcast here. Again, he is one of the guys that uh, has helped me a lot to uh, upgrade my brand. Uh, and you know what? He's one of the podcasts that I like working with. Uh, not too many podcasts out there that I work with because, you know, I don't know what's, what's the agenda. And in this genre, you got you to gotta be careful who you talk to, who you deal with, who you work with, because, you know, everybody got a motive and whatnot. So you got to be careful. So, again, big ups to the Turbo Tabloid, my boy, uh, Michael Sorrentino, Jay Sansing, Mook, and all the other guys, and my peoples that we hang out with me in House of Glory. So until then, guys, be safe, be uh, and, and enjoy your weekend, and enjoy Forbidden Door. Until then, guys, I'll see you guys next week. Top guy out. <laughs>